Uh, no, None. because it's so nasty now. It's scary. I wouldn't. I wouldn't think they would be safe. Do not come <laughs> to the UK. All you will get is free accommodation, warmth, <laughs> food, forty quid a week, education, <laughs> health service. It's just not worth it. <laughs> That's it. I think you're being unnecessarily provocative. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the show. I'm Kevin O'Sullivan. And I'm Alex Phillips. We're with you for the next hour to shimmy down the dread carpet of gloom and doom like your favourite Z-list misanthropes. Uh, you're with Talk TV, on TV, on radio, online, and on your smart speaker. Would that be uh, a reference, uh, Alex, to all, all of our heroes from the showbiz world? Our who, heroes! Who turned up to pat each other's back at the back. Those valiant like, patriots and Brexiteers of show business. Actors and directors. Oh, it's an award ceremony. I won an award. They just love award ceremonies, uh, as long as they're enjoying them. Meanwhile, us at home, bored to tears with these three-hour extravaganzas. But we'll be Eyes bringing you up up to date with the BAFTAs later on. I don't watch the BAFTAs anymore, having had to have watched them for many years. Now I don't have to. I have the luxury of never watching them or the Oscars or any other awards show. Why do people want to watch these things? They're so boring. But I guess... Are they actually televised? I, mean, I don't know. Of course I'm they're, so they're televised. Oh, they're televised. Oh, gosh. They're televised, all right. It was... Uh, David Tennant was the host, who I gather did quite a good job. Anyway, uh, we'll get to that uh, in a little while, but uh, lots to get in uh, before that. And first up... Uh, Let's talk about Sakia Starmer and Labour. They're in turmoil. Uh, Starmer went to the Scottish Labour conference uh, yesterday and called for a ceasefire that lasts. Poignantly, of course, not saying immediately, because the SNP is saying immediately. He wants a ceasefire now, right. not immediately, because that's when... Uh, the difference I mean, between now and immediate, that's what they're talking about. He's... And by the way, by the way, Alex, yeah. uh, Netanyahu could give but a rat's backside what any right. of them think. This is exactly it. These muppety little trumped-up would-be councillors who just happened to sit in the Scottish Parliament have brought forward this motion to say, there must be no more fighting in Gaza. You know, it must well, stop now. No one cares. The Labour Party at their Scottish Commons think, well, you know, we're going to look at the text on this, but we actually don't want to say it should be now, but not immediately, and it's got to be long-lasting. Yeah. And I'm like, hold on. So, first of all, not a single person in the Middle East cares what you think or what you do. Secondly, what it says to me, in fact, is you're really spineless. Because rather than talking <laughs> about the fact that people can't get hospital appointments, that people can't heat their homes, that people have rubbish schools and nothing seems to work, instead, once again, I'm going to say it for the gazillionth time this year, the tail is wagging the dog. You're pandering to people who think that they can run the show through bullying and intimidation. Well, this is the speech. This is the speech at the Scottish Labour conference that Benjamin Netanyahu who was waiting for. He didn't know what to do in Gaza. Oh, Luckily, <laughs> he has got a plan for him. Take it away, Keir. An end to the fighting, not just now, not just for a pause, but permanently. A ceasefire that lasts, conference, that is what must happen now. The fighting must stop now. No oh. one cares what Keir Starmer thinks. I'll guarantee you that the vast, vast majority of people in Israel and Gaza She's have never heard of Sir Keir Starmer. Lego Still head. less have that... they heard of the obscure little Labour backbenchers who seem to think what they think matters a jot. It does not. Netanyahu could not care less what the Labour think. They're tying themselves up in knots. Well, the only reason he, uh, that Starmer won't say immediate because is because that's in the SNP uh, proposal well, to Parliament. I would say the only reason he's made a big song and dance about this is because you've got an organisation called Muslim Votes who are threatening to stand against various Labour MPs that's because they're being challenged on the streets and on the doorsteps by uh, one particular community. And 
And so they're kowtowing to these demands. And my view of this is if you want to be the future prime minister, you cannot kowtow wimpishly to the demands and the febrile protestations of one small community. Yeah, but so is Starmer. Uh, so, so is Sunak. Sunak's well, doing they, the same yeah, thing. They, all They've all lost their taste for this war. As I see, as I recall, the official yes. stance of Britain and indeed the Labour Party under Keir Starmer was we stand with Israel. We yeah. stand with their right to defend themselves. They all seem to be losing their taste for this, including the Shadow Health Secretary, West Streeting, who spoke to Talk TV, uh, the breakfast show this morning. Where we want to get to is an end to this war, the release of all Israeli hostages that are being held, and a serious plan for the reconstruction of Gaza and the foundation of a state of Palestine alongside a state of Israel. That's another one you see. You can. I like Wes. You can for the birds, mate. Picture the scene in uh, Jerusalem. Uh, Netanyahu going. Ah, da, da, should we have a ceasefire? What does West Streeting think? Let's find out. I mean, this is just ludicrous. This is like okay. a Westminster debating society. It does not matter no. what West Streeting, Keir Starmer, or frankly Cameron or Sunak think. Uh, Netanyahu has made up his own mind, and this is just ludicrous nonsense from our people. Uh, doesn't matter a jot what they say. Uh, the arrogant idiots. Right now, let's move on. Uh, Prince... Another arrogant idiot. Yeah, talking of uh, 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 etc. Prince Harry. Uh, now, uh, unbelievably, at the weekend, he let it be known that he was offering his services <laughs> to, on a temporary basis, return to frontline royal duties to help it's out sick. while his dad's off sick yeah. because they are suffering uh, staff shortage problems, to say the least. I think they're I mean, suffering work shortage problems too think, in Montecito. Yeah, don't you think that this just... This just is a, a real indication of just how much Harry doesn't understand what right. he's done. But you can't stand there in America accusing your dad and all the fa your dad of being mean, the family of being racists, all of that. You can't do all of that and well, then just expect right. to be welcomed back into he's the like fold. He's like a grim little vulture sniffing around Carrion, isn't he? You know, he's like, <laughs> might there be a red carpet or a TV camera or some glad handing or a headline in this for me? Well, I may as well return to the front line valiantly and pick up some bouquets of flowers from little kids clapping me as I walk down the street because my ego hasn't been stroked enough in the last 24 hours. Yeah. Your citizens campaigning for privacy. I mean, it's just <laughs> really pathetic, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the royal family uh, will not have him back. We're understanding uh, increasingly uh, via the sources at Buckingham Palace that it's not only William who says there is no way back for Harry ever because of the way he's behaved. It is also the king. The king understands that the people of Britain won't put up with it. He doesn't deserve to be forgiven for the way he's behaved. No. He's cashed in on his own family, selling them down the river, calling them racist, calling slagging his dad the a, sk a skinflint, slagging off the entire country, saying we're all uh, slave drivers or something. Well, I'm sorry, Harry, you've burnt your bridges and there's no repairing them no. and the palace have made that clear. But the fact that he seems to think, oh, well, you know, I'll come back and help out. Like, the fact that he seems to think, like, oh, thanks, Harry, do that. Turned, it's just unbelievable. Turned up, turned up for half an hour and said, oh, yeah, I've got to go now, folks, because I've got to go and uh, give some awards at fake news ceremony somewhere in Las Vegas. But yeah, and you've got me on speed dial for when you need my grand well, presence don't. and my celebrity well, we sparkle. Yeah. Go away. And by the, by the way, some of the papers are saying, oh, the, well, the reason for the shortness, the brevity, of uh, Harry's meeting with the King a couple of weeks ago at 30 minutes in uh, Clarence House was that uh, uh, Palace aides feared that they said that Harry wanted to go to Sandringham with his dad, but Palace aides feared that if he did that, they'd never get rid of him. That's the actual <laughs> quote. It's not that. He had, like to, he, had to to he had to get back to Las Vegas. He had to get back to Las Vegas to present a tawdry award at a tawdry award ceremony for American footballers. That's why he had to leave. That's why the meeting was short, uh, which is another reason why he should never be forgiven. Right, moving on. Uh, this is uh, one that will interest you, Alex. Ooh, yeah, uh, mobile yeah, yeah. Fa phones are to be banned from schools throughout the day, including break times, in a bid to yes. cut down disruption and improve behaviour. Now, this is only advice from the government, <laughs> and a lot of people are saying, well, you're just jumping on a bandwagon, because <laughs> a, a lot of, schools have, a lot of right. schools have already done this. So, basically, schools are making up their own minds what they do anyway, and this isn't even a law, or and it's just... Yeah. Guidelines. So it is basically a nothing. But what this I would say yeah. is, uh, I mean, thank goodness someone's doing something because. But please, you can ban mobile.
mobile phones with kids at school. And if you're a school teacher who's sitting there and during math, someone's just like, doodly do 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 Anyway, you're not doing your job properly. You're being rubbish. Of course, they shouldn't be doing that during school time. Oh, you can read them. I don't even understand. This is not even a thing. But the big concern is what they then do after school. And they go sit upstairs in their rooms, go on the dark web, watch adult material, look at those sort of stabby things videos and I don't know what they're doing, but it's not good. They all go in crackers, aren't they? These Savvy videos, yeah. yeah I mean, they're, I mean, they're, they're looking at bad stuff on their look phones quite stuff. often. Yeah, I um, and they're, they're mad. And I actually think like, this is all very well saying, well, just don't look at your phone during lesson time. Duh, that shouldn't be happening anyway. But again, the government are just sort of following on, on a wave of public debate. And what they should be doing is saying, what can we really genuinely do to protect children online, apart from the just... Oh, sorry, them. I was just looking at my phone, sorry. Well, Savvy video. Yeah, but that's the point, isn't it? We're all compelled to... Kids are no different to the rest of us. You know you know what it's like? You have a yeah, spare why do you moment. sit with, you I go sit like with my this, phone on my you? desk like I'm going to make a call in the middle We're of the all show. Addicted. Like, We're all addicted to them, but adults should be able to handle some of the stuff on there. Kids, not so much, so perhaps this is a good thing. We'll be dealing with this later, We're obviously. We're going to be... Oh, course, or early course, 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 course. Ban the phones, course, uh, uh, Now, let's move on. Uh, Tory backlash at Rishi Sunak wasting Brexit freedoms after quietly putting this sweeping just... EU equality rules but... into Britain. He's still imposing <laughs> EU law on so Britain. We only had to follow ECJ judgments for a certain period of time after leaving the EU because, well, we were leaving the EU, weren't we, in their silly, bogus uh, clown mm -hmm. court? But he's decided that he's going to now put into law all of these ECJ judgments, which means they become part of our canon, if you will, our case precedents. And so things that someone's decided in, I don't know, France, where they're all a little bit hippy-dippy and socialist and, you know, get upset if you make them retire any later than the age of 49, is now going to be something in our canon of law that a judge could, well, you know, in Mrs. Uh, Mademoiselle uh, Le Blanche, uh, do, do, do. Uh, so we've got to Le do Blanche. it here. Yeah, I know that Madame Le Leblanc. She's a very nice girl. Uh, but yeah, that, no, that, so basically, Mad. EU law, uh, Rishi Sunak has put Easy. loads of EU equality laws into British law. In other words, he still hasn't uh, cut the umbilical cord with Brussels, and that's a disgrace. It's a, and it's that, a real disgrace so how many saying, laws generally we've right, still got hanging around what from our said EU. Is, well, bitch. there are certain laws that are really important on things like breastfeeding in the workplace that is part of this whole bundle of legislation. So we've got to just put it all into our law, into our statute. And then, do you know what we might do is go back a bit later and open up our law again and twiddle a few bits and bobs to get rid of the stuff we don't like. How about doing the work beforehand and not just blanket imposing all of this foreign court judgment into our case law. Yes, Mad! Stop, stop being such a globalist, Rishi. We left stop Europe it. for a reason, to uh, determine our own fate. Stop being beholden to globalist organisations. That's what Britain voted for. Mm -hmm. Why have you never been able to understand that? Uh, let's move on now. Now, the post office scandal right. uh, continues apace, and a massive row going on between uh, Kemi Badenoch, uh, of course, the... Uh, uh, minister in question, and uh, the ex-chairman of the post office, Henry Staunton. Henry Staunton to has uh, revealed yesterday, or said to the Sunday Times, uh, claimed to the Sunday Times, that when uh, he, he uh, was told when he was chairman to hang on, to keep delaying it, to make sure that no compensation get got paid until after mm. the next election, so the Tory government got away uh, with it. And uh, Kemi Badenoch said this is a disgraceful yeah. misrepresentation. Basically, he said, she said, uh, flat out, Henry Staunton is lying. And, of course, well, by extension, he says she's lying. Well, so basically, she said to him, he was brought in to be chairman of the post office and deal with all of this scandal, and clearly, I don't think he was doing a great job. So she said, you've got to go. This, this, this whole compensation thing is just rubbish, um, and someone's got to take the rap. You're the man at the top, and you're not doing the right job, are you? And he's sort of, like, you know, crying into his pillow at night because he was pulled out of retirement to fail and is told to go back to retirement. Um, <laughs> but then what it turns out is he's now sort of, like, covering his own back by saying, but I was told by the civil service that I've got to not do all of these compensation claims because there's not enough money in government coffers. Yeah. Um, so it's just, once again, a sort of round circle of pointing the finger of blame mm. at somebody else. And, you know, I'd imagine if Kemi Badenoch said to him, you're rubbish, it's done, then he probably was rubbish. Yeah. He should just, you know... Yeah, Badenoch says flat-out Henry Staunton is lying. As I say, by extension, that means 
He's saying she is lying. Which one do you think it is? That's another story we need to visit later on on Cross Talk. Second early Double Cross Talk there. Uh, now, uh, let's talk about... Well, we uh, might not get there because we might be in the middle of a nuclear winter. Uh, judging the by Kremlin has threatened story. to unleash Armageddon on the West if it loses the Ukraine. In other words, the territory that it has always already occupied in uh, Ukraine, it wants to hang on to. And if we make, hmm. in uh, down the line, if we make uh, Russia give that up, uh, the Kremlin says uh, it will nuke uh, London, Washington, Berlin and Kyiv. So that's good, isn't it? Uh, oh, I know, but I can't wait. This was a Medvedev saying it, who, of course, was that guy who pretended to be president while Putin had to take some time off while they twiddled with the Constitution and made sure he could become president for life. And Medvedev's this type of character. He kind of looks a bit like George Osborne, uh, but he's this kind of character who loves making these grandiose threats and basically says, you know, these borders, 1922 borders, 1991 frontiers. I know he's always talking about borders and frontiers, and if we don't have this, <laughs> this and this, which is imperial Russia, then we're just going to fire our nukes into everywhere around Europe. A typical Russian chit-chat. Uh, but, you know, you have to remember, of course, someone else who liked saying such things, Adolf Hitler. Uh, he was a man who was pretty obsessed with borders and uh, with imperial uh, advancement. So you've got to take this stuff fairly seriously. Um, but I just learned from reading this piece of paper here, quite excitingly, the British and German defence ministers apparently are beep-holes um, who believe the world cannot afford a Russian victory in the war. That is what Medvedev said on his Telegraph channel. And I I've just found out the name of the German defence minister. It's like the worst chimera hybrid human you could imagine. Go on, then. Boris Pistorius. Oh, yeah, yeah, but I've heard of Pistorius before. Uh, Boris yeah. Pistorius. Blade Runner. Uh, <laughs> A blonde Blade Runner. I think we've got wow. some uh, sort of moving on, us, but still with Russia. Um, Alexei Navalny, the brave critic uh, of... Uh, Putin, who, like so many critics of Putin, ended up dead in Russia mm. in uh, a hellhole Arctic prison up uh, near Siberia. Uh, anyway, uh, we've got leaked footage, I think, showing a motorcade that they think is taking Navalny's body out of this prison. Uh, his wife, his widow and his mother have called for the body. They haven't seen the body yet. We're mm -hmm. There it goes. We're hearing reports that the body is covered in bruising. Uh, and uh, the uh, security says, the Russian security services told his wife and his mother uh, that poor Navalny had died due to a condition known as sudden death Well, I syndrome. think it probably was a sudden, sudden death. Well, not that um, sudden. After, but, after seri uh, this... quite a lot of torture, I would imagine. But Russia just trolls people. Russia will do these absolutely flagrant, deliberately so, in view of the world, just to tick us off. acts, yeah. Yeah. and then troll us by saying things like, oh, they just wanted to go visit Salisbury Cathedral. They came on a day trip, because apparently it's got a really so, nice spire. It's sudden oh, death it's sudden syndrome. Death syndrome. Yeah. I mean, this is what Russia are like. They're absolute gangster thugs. They are. Um, but, you know, uh, every every gangster needs a mole, and apparently Putin has a new woman in town. Did yeah, you know? and uh, have, have a little discussion about this. Uh, was Navalny murdered? A disgust. Uh, I think we all know the answer to that. that. Uh, now, let's talk about... Uh, Milk, mother's milk. I'm Apparently, not Putin's new woman. Oh yes, yeah, sorry. I, I did a little segue to that. And, okay. Uh, you... Well, you do. Uh, meanwhile, Vladimir has found love oh. with a woman they call the Russian Barbie. She's a London-educated. Uh, she's a social media expert. I love the fact. Take it that, away. I love the fact that this is Putin who left his wife, who kind of did look a bit like his mother and his cleaner combined into one, for a young gymnast, and now he's apparently he's got someone else on the go who works as his morality is. guardian. What yeah. a title! Yeah, but there's the, there, that's Putin's morality guardian. There, there you is. go. There you go. Yeah, but um, well, <laughs> can't beat a morality guardian to hang around with, can you? Uh, Boris um, has many morality guardians. Indeed. And that isn't Boris Pistorius. Right, let's move. Boris, I would actually had heard of Boris Pistorius. Had you? Yeah, very much so. Because yeah. it struck me the same as you. Hang on. It isn't, reminds me. Isn't that the same as Oscar you Pistorius? Know, did you ever play that game when you were younger and you folded a piece of paper no. into four quarters and someone drew a head, then you unfolded it and someone drew the body and then someone drew the legs and you yeah. open it up to make a sort of strange chimera? I can only just imagine the game of Boris Pistorius. Yeah. Yeah, well, there you go. Uh, let's leave Boris the story. He's getting far too much coverage this morning. Uh, now, uh, yeah, as I mentioned just now, uh, trans women's milk is as good as breast milk. An NHS trust in Sussex says that uh, a, a trans woman, you know, who's gone through a lot of hormonal uh, processes in order to produce milk, so there's a lot of chemicals going around in a right. trans woman's 
uh, body uh, that uh, that is just as good to feed a baby with as natural mother's milk. I would say that is a 10 tons of rubbish. Well, I don't think it's 10 times the rubbish. I think it's absolute child abuse. It's and un un experimental, untested yes. things. Just because someone vainly abuse. wants to say, I want to be able to breastfeed my child even though I don't have breasts. Uh, so they pump themselves full of artificial hormones just so they can have the experience of being able to breastfeed instead of just using the bottle. What are going to happen to these babies down the line? We don't know. Maybe they'll be OK and it's perfectly mm -hmm. fine, but we don't know. Why are we experimenting Agreed. on little babies just for, so someone can put a picture on Instagram. Yes, yeah, so it's ill. This is a woke friendly policy. Oh, Gross. this is a woke thing to do. Nice to trans women and all. Woke that. What about kills. the kids? I suggest kids should not be uh, drinking this milk full of chemicals when they can uh, hopefully uh, have the natural thing right. straight from a mother. That has to be better than this chemical filled stuff uh, from trans women. Uh, now, still with uh, the health. Uh, service, health issues, uh, the uh, hospital, the Countess of Chester Hospital, which you may remember, uh, Alex, uh, mm. uh, was very much in the forefront of the national consciousness when uh, it turned out that Lucy Letby, the angel of death nurse who murdered uh, seven babies there, uh, she got uh, done for a full life sentence. And uh, uh, it turns out that uh, at that hospital, uh, since then, and around about that time, when Lucy was in hospital, the staff have received a total of £1.5 million in excellent oh, performance okay, bonuses. Ken. We know that the NHS is absolutely yeah. slushing with money, that it's got way too much money than it knows what to deal with. I mean, all those staff sitting there thinking, I haven't got anything to do because I've done my job so well, and we've got all of this, you know, credit that we need to spend. We deserve a bonus. Uh, come on, get real. I mean, what's so sad? They, they, they were accused of a cover-up, of course, the Countess of Chester Hospital, after it lost records of its excellence awards, which is the term basically for sticking your hand in the till and rewarding yourself an extra Christmas pay packet for being useless. Yeah. Um, £792,000 of this £1.5 million bonus money uh, was handed out to staff in 2022-23 when Letby mm. was on trial. Yeah, I when the think... trial was... These people are tone right. deaf. Can we Don't just... give yourself bonuses yeah. while someone's in in the dock for murdering babies at your hospital. We need to get rid of the bonus culture here. Basically, yeah. you get paid a big salary, and if you fail, you then don't get paid it. Not, you're paid a big salary, and then you get some perks on top for also failing. It yeah. is wrong. All right, Just Stop Oil, I've got a secret plan this to occupy grim. the homes of MPs. We saw what happened to uh, poor Tobias Elwood last week when a bunch of uh, eco... Uh, demonstrators and uh, pa pro Palestinian de demonstrators went outside his house in Bournemouth. Well, Just Stop Oil are planning to invade right. uh, a series of MPs' homes in pursuit of their cause that none of us really give I mean, much of a damn about. This is a really cool uh, story done by the Mail on Sunday who sent someone in as an activist. I love it when journalists do that. Proper journalism, Undercover. That, proper hackery. Undercover and said, well, I'm going to get involved with Just Stop Oil. And they said, well, this is our short-term plan. We're going after oh, Labour politicians. We want to try and occupy their houses and force them to back whatever it is they're backing. Just stopping oil, one assumes. Um, and uh, but it's quite grim, isn't it? Because this is what this is where we've got to in society now. You let them sit around singing "Kumbaya" in the middle of Westminster <laughs> Bridge and don't do anything about and then, it. And now look, they think they can get away with even home. more and even more and even more. And this is what's happening now yeah. across politics, whether it's pro-Palestine marches, whether it's just stop oil. These activists are getting emboldened to do what they want. They don't end up in prison. They don't even end up with a fine. They end up on the front page of newspapers with their mad coloured hair thinking they're the heroes of the hour when, frankly, they should be rattling around in a ball stall, I don't know, breaking rocks at the side of a road. Well, they're my ball We've stall. lost put, any sense of Put them spying. into a full-scale prison. Put them into a full-scale... Yeah, they are. Hard, uh, hard labour. Yeah, good idea. Exactly. We've, got to do, we've got to punish these people We've properly. Got to do Stop about fining this. them. Send them to damn jail. Uh, now, uh, the Boy Scouts, uh, I suppose they're probably the Girl Scouts as well now. Trans Scouts. Uh, yeah, Don't Trans them. Scouts. Uh, well, this is what this is all about. Uh, they're, got, they're advertising for a diversity officer, head of EDI, which is e Equality, Diversity and Inclusivity. I think it has £75,000 a year. This is an organisation, of course, that has been accused of capitulating to wokery, uh, trans scouts, etc., etc. 
and uh, this is ridiculous. I mean, I, I, I hate to say it, but does anyone join the Scout and Guide movement anymore anyway? It doesn't seem to me that they do. Um, but uh, but th what is important to say here is, especially the Girl Guiding movement, has got into a lot of trouble recently because it's allowed um, yeah. uh, boys to essentially sleep in tents with brownies and stuff like that. You know, you shouldn't be mixing genders and teenage boys with teenage girls in tents. But it gets even more grim than this because apparently the Scouts have previously faced criticism criticism yeah, for introducing you know you get those little badges you like saw. lesbian fun badge fun pride badge, fun badge bisexual trans fun, fun badge. badge this is not right this is sick this is pedophilic yeah. frankly pride fun badge lesbian fun badge bisexual fun badge trans fun badge whoever came scout. up with that idea should that. be That's in ridiculous. prison uh, and with also also it's not a particularly wealthy organization it does great work i used to be a boy scout so I used, yeah, they used to be it doesn't great. necessarily churn out to uh, Decent citizens. Sometimes they end up like me. But uh, seriously, it's a, it's a good, great organisation being ruined by this nonsensical wokery. Uh, right. Doesn't have much money. There are much, much better ways it could spend seventy-five um, grand than right. on a diversity it's officer. Kind of Ridiculous. Like, to That's me, very guys quickly. and scouts should be the sort yeah. of you know the zenith yeah, of non-wokery. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, so talking about wokery, apparently there's been a £9.2 million probe into yep. military spending calling for more inclusive army. Uh, and, and actually all that money wasted on how the army could be inclusive could have paid for... 400 so soldiers. And guess what? Guess what? Uh, among this report that 9.2 million pounds, uh, it's called for more inclusivity and diversity. And also it called for a review in the way uh, Generation Z soldiers, armed forces people, uh, are ordered around. So uh, they want a, a no. nicer way of ordering Generation Z soldiers around. <laughs> So, I'm serious, so as not to hurt their feelings. In the army? Yes. Like, you can't, you can't yeah. tell people yeah. what yeah. to do and don't do this and don't march and don't stand okay. to attention because that's too mean. OK, uh, but, yeah, oh, it's we're ridiculous. we're doomed. You know, Putin's... He's just got, he's got a march on us, hasn't he? Ridiculous. Very quickly, uh, yeah. the Oscars, Op Oppenheimer won all the big awards, seven wins, Poor Things, five, three, the zone of interest, and two, the holdovers. Barbie didn't win any awards. And do you want to know... Who cares? Why film. didn't Barbie win? Why didn't Margot Robbie win? I'll tell you why. Because Barbie was a useless film. Isn't, isn't the clue in the title? It is a film about Barbie. Yeah. It's not exactly some sort of, you know, great masterpiece in the oeuvre of recent mm. cinematography, is it? I yeah. mean, it's just it's a it's film a man about hating, Barbie. It's a man-hating dirge. Oh, uh, it tonight, it wasn't very good. <laughs> I think a bit of a man-hating dirge. I mean, that's You've never I'm heard today. a better recommendation than that. <laughs> man-hating dirge. Congratulations wow. to Killian Murphy for getting Best Actor, Robert Downey Jr. Uh, got uh, the best supporting actor and so on and so forth. But oh, we've wow. come to the end of the show, Alex. Thank you for tuning in. Do join us, of course, at one o'clock. You know what for. Crosswalk. Crosswalk. Crosswalk, Crosswalk talk. talk. Julie Hartley Brew is back. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaking. The British fish industry has been hit by a perfect storm of problems. First, the pandemic, then Brexit, and now the economic recession. A woman can become a man, and a man can become a woman. And if you think that, you're certifiably insane. David Cameron needs to worry about his own country, and frankly, he can kiss my ass. Yeah. Boom, fantastic. We need a bit more of that in the UK. Well, She's saying what a lot of people think. No, if you can't then... call Hamas terrorist, I can't talk to you. Cut the interview. There is something to be said, though, about types of breed, that if they do no. turn, then no. you can be no. in trouble. I've got a cockapoo. No. If that cockapoo turns on me, I win the battle. This concept that actually kids wouldn't carry knives if they could go and play tiddlywinks at the, you know, the corner of a street or whatever. I think it's a nonsense. Our only way out of the theatre was through the stage. Right. Uh, so we actually had to, to pass right next to him, right in front of him. Mm -hmm. And at that point, he tried to get the entire crowd to chant with him, ceasefire now and free Palestine. Right. But you managed to get out and you must have been shocked. If we had lingered for over a minute, right. I think it would have come to physical violence.
Yeah. You've been having to fight again for compensation after having to fight to be believed, then fight to get your conviction quashed, to get what's rightfully yours. If Archetypes was as successful as they claim, why is Spotify